Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Solar Stock Investor. Today, I'd like to talk about silver futures and what has been going on in that market. The silver spot price is the price we refer to as the silver price. And that right now is right around $19. So whenever you people talk, you hear people talk about the price of silver, that is really the spot price. And it's very different from what uh, physical silver prices are, which currently is around $34 versus $19 for the spot price. $34 is what you pay for an ounce of silver if you want a physical silver coin or a one ounce bar. And it's much higher now thanks to much higher premiums than historically are normal. Uh, you have also shortages in terms of supply and much longer delivery times. And so the physical silver price right now for an ounce is considerably higher than, a, uh, than the spot price. The spot price is determined by futures contracts. Huge amounts of silver or paper silver are traded every day. And uh, futures contracts are agreements to buy and sell silver in the future. And each contract controls 5,000 ounces of silver. These contracts are used by manufacturers and producers of silver. It helps them to hedge costs, also large uh, institutional um, players in the space. But they're also used by speculators who want to speculate on the silver price uh, with some leverage. Most contracts, when they come uh, to maturity, are not settled in cash, uh, sorry, not settled in physical silver. Instead, they're settled in cash. And that makes silver actually the single most leveraged physical market. In other words, the amount of paper silver traded versus physical silver. And so it's a highly leveraged derivatives market. The next closest to give you some idea is nickel at 86 to 1. And in the case of silver, it's more than double at 193 ounces of paper silver to one physical ounce. So in the London and COMEX, which is the New York silver markets, silver inventories have been falling dramatically in the last year or so. In fact, this chart is uh, does not do full justice because the month of August has seen an even lower low. It's a combination of COMEX and LBMA London silver markets. And the uh, to combine, they're actually at lows that have not been seen since um, these numbers have been tracked, which is about uh, from July of 2016. And uh, in the last 12 months, silver inventories have fallen uh, over 20%. So silver's been leaving the exchanges in a very rapid uh, way. There's been some great research by Bullion Star, which shows us that the London inventories are their lowest since they've been tracked. 254 million ounces of silver have been withdrawn just uh, since the month of November. As I say, that's down 21% in just the last nine months. The annual supply, to give you some perspective of silver, is a billion ounces. Of that billion ounces, 85% or so is newly mined silver. And so right now, there's actually less than a full year's supply uh, held in the London exchange. Now, uh, if we break it down a little bit further, 64% of the silver held at the exchange is actually held by silver ETFs. And so with so much, so two-thirds, almost two-thirds of all the silver held and these depositories are actually held by ETFs. So, and that has actually flipped in the last several years where it was silver uh, held by ETFs were much a smaller proportion. So these will actually help to drive the direction of silver prices as we go forward. On top of the fact that 64% right now is held by silver ETFs, there's also some silver held by institutions, by family offices, by high net worth individuals. And these tend to be people and participants who will buy and hold the silver for the longer term. So right now, less than 36%, probably less even than 30% of annual mine supply is held in stock. So that's that means that inventories are under five months of consumption on the exchanges. And if you look at what's been happening on the New York COMEX exchange, the, simulus, the situation is very similar. So where else is all of this silver going? Well, apparently it's going east. Um, there certainly is huge demand from solar, especially with the energy crisis in Europe. We do know that 
China controls in in uh, a large way the solar industry, producing over eighty percent of uh, of solar panels worldwide. And I think, uh, given the the size of the demand in the last year or so, you can expect that uh, forecasts for from the Silver Institute and others are that uh, they're going to revise industrial demand much higher for the rest of this year, and that we could actually be breaking records on. The, the levels of industrial demand for silver. And as I say, um, silver is going east, and it's very interesting to notice that uh, a lot of it seems to be going to India in particular. So Indian imports of silver have been surging. This last bar on this chart is 1,800 tons in July alone, hugely surpassing prior months and dramatically higher over last year's numbers. And in fact, even the premiums uh, over spot that are being paid in India for silver have been rising. So India certainly is consuming and importing a whole lot of silver. If you look at the breakdown, only 2% of that silver going to India is in the form of grains. So that's sort of little grains of silver. Usually grains of silver are silver in the form that's being used to produce other things melted down and uh, used in other applications. So with 98% of the bullion imports being in the form of bars, that suggests that most of that silver is being imported for investment purposes. And this chart shows where that silver is coming from and going into India. And so it shows that a huge portion of it, the majority, is coming from the UK. And if you consider the uh, the withdrawals from the UK, the London silver deposits depositories, then it certainly makes sense if you see this kind of surge in imports into India from from the UK. And if you look at the positioning of silver futures, this is the smart money hedge, hedgers. These are the uh, these are the large uh, large holders of uh, silver futures, and their positioning right now is near zero. It's actually slightly negative, and when it gets down to such low levels as we've as we've seen a couple of times in the last uh, four years or so, uh, it tends to be a very bullish indicator for silver. Silver tends to rise. And so when commercial hedgers like this are so low in terms of hedging for downside for silver, that suggests that they see very little risk to the downside for the silver price and expect uh, it to rise and see very see it in a very bullish light. So these are all kinds of things that I talk about in my recent book, The Great Silver Bull. It's available on Amazon in paperback and in Kindle. It's been a bestseller since its release. And if you'd like to, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below, subscribe as well. And to follow me, go to silverstockinvestor.com. And you can follow me also on Twitter and on LinkedIn. Thanks for watching.